to the live stream. My name is Zahir Anwari, co-founder of Sublime Trading. If you guys could just give me a hello in the chat box, let me know that you can hear me, that you can see my screen okay as well. I'll give it a couple of minutes before I start getting into the analysis. Okay, so what we're going to cover today, while I wait for messages to come through, what we're going to be covering today is the S&P 500. Look at where we are in relation to the 200 simple moving average. That's always our starting point, certainly my starting point, what we do here at Sublime Trading. This is our starting point because the S&P 500 gives us an overall indicator of market conditions, whether we're bullish, bearish, or whether we should be standing aside. Once we can engage in what kind of market conditions we're dealing with, on the S&P 500, we can then narrow down to the stocks on our list and then potentially invest in those stocks. If the S&P 500 hasn't set up according to our criteria, then we stand aside. If it's confirmed bullishness, we buy the best performing stocks. If it confirms bearishness, then we short the best performing stocks or the weakest performing stocks, I should, uh, I should say there. Okay, it looks like we are all good. So let's get straight into the analysis. So this is a typical three screen setup of mine. This is the S&P 500 that we're looking at. We've got the monthly in the top left, the weekly time frame in the top right, and we've got the daily time frame down here across the bottom. So what I'm looking for is alignment. I want all three time frames to be moving in the same direction, either to the upside or the downside. So if all three are moving in the bullish direction, then we look to buy stocks. If all three are confirming a bearish market, then we short stocks. If all three are, if all three have a mixture of bullish and bearish factors, then we tend to stand aside. So that's really, really important. Establishing market conditions is the foundation to whether you should buying, or selling or standing aside. It's a step that people generally overlook and how people then end up buying stocks that they shouldn't have and often end up in that situation where you will have heard the expression to catch a falling knife. It's when you buy a stock thinking it's going to reverse and go against you and it just keeps on dropping, keeps on dropping, keeps on dropping. And then you're stuck with a stock in your portfolio that's running at a loss. You don't know how to sell it and you just end up waiting a very, very long time for that stock to recover. It's a very inefficient way of investing. So we want to cut that out and we want to introduce a more efficient approach, one that gives you the optimal market conditions to be buying into stocks. And the best way to do that is to use the S&P 500. So let's start with the monthly time frame. Just going to open that up. Sorry, let me just align that properly. Okay, there we have it. So what do we have? Well, first of all, we've got the high of last year. So this is the highest point of 2021. And this is the lowest point of 2021. Typically, what we want to see is the market trading above the highest point for it to have a a bullish bias, we or we want to see price trading below the lowest point of last year for it to have a bearish bias. So that's current price action. I should be clear on that. We want to see current price action either trading above the high of last year to confirm a bull market or below the low of last year to confirm a bear market. If it's trading inside those annual levels, then we consider it a correction. And that's exactly what's happened this year. So if you Look across social media, generally, there'll be a lot of fear mongering, how we're in a bear market, how we're expecting further weakness, you know, recessions, all of those sort of terms that repeat themselves again and again and again. And generally, those sort of terms are there to instill fear in people. And the reason why it's easy to instill fear in people is because people don't look at the chart. They don't know how to look at the chart and they don't know how to actually establish the market conditions that we are actually in. So looking at the S&P 500, yes, there's been a significant decline this year. You're looking at 25% roughly to the low of last month, October. Since then, it's recovered. But price has never really broken below the low of last year and gathered any momentum. We had a little bit of a break below in September. But October, there was a quick reversal. And November has been a bit of an up and down month. It was bearish. Now it's looking more bullish. Ideally, what we're going to see is that momentum back 
towards the current all-time high. That's what we want to see. That's not a guarantee because, of course, the market could find resistance at that 4,000 round number where it is right now, and it could then start weakening further. But ultimately, unless price breaks out of this, this consolidation area that it's in, unless price breaks above the high of last year or the low of last year and starts weakening or gaining strength, we're actually in just a sideways market or a correction market. Okay, now let's move across to the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame is also painting a very significant picture. What we know, I covered this in the last stream, is that, let me just clear this up a little bit so we get a clearer picture of what's happening. Okay, what we know is that in 2000 to 2002, 2003, that's when we had this bear market and that was around the tech bubble when the tech bubble burst significant decline notice that price broke through the 200 moving average in 2001 2001 yeah we had a weakness then we had a recovery price came to that high point there and then we had the financial meltdown between 2008 2009 notice that price broke through the 200 moving average in 2008 july 2008 and we had another drop to the downside about 50 percent drop since that low of 2009, we've had a good recovery to the upside. When price broke above the 200 moving average, which is this black line, guys, in 2010, since 2010, we've simply had a bounce here, which was in 2011. And then when price bounced off the 200 moving average in 2011, it went on a run of 88% towards this high point here. Then we had another correction towards a 200 moving average in 2016. Let me just open this up so you can see for yourself. Then we had another correction in 2016 and price then went on from that bounce to the upside. Price then went on a 60% run towards this high in 2018. Then 2018, we had another correction towards the 200 moving average. Price bounced again. So let's be clear on that. It bounced in 2011 bounced in 2016, bounced in 2018. Now, following 2018, we had this run in the market. And then what do we have around this period here? We had the coronavirus, when there was a 35% drop in two months. We can ignore that. And the reason why we can ignore that is because it was a black swan event. Hi, Trading View. Good to have you on here. Thanks for the coins. Still getting used to the setup, but um, appreciate the support and having you in. So the reason why we can ignore the coronavirus is simply because it's a black swan event. These events happen every so often. They have some kind of impact, sometimes quite a significant impact, like we saw around coronavirus. But then what happened is that it got absorbed into the market and the bull trend continued. So we can ignore the fact that we had this big decline. It even broke below the 200 moving average simply because it was a black swan event. If this wasn't, if this didn't happen, the chances of this continuing to the same high would have been equally high. We would likely have seen the same uh, the same move in the market just without the blip around the coronavirus. So if we take the run from the low of 2018, which is the bounce of the 200 moving average, and take it to the highest point of last year and this year, we're looking at a 105% run in the market. Right, 105%. So I'm just going to go through that one more time, guys. If you look at the bull run, once price bounced off the 200 moving average in 2011, it went on a, let me just move that a little bit closer, right? So when price broke off, bounced off the 200 moving average in 2011, oh, excuse me, there we go. It went on a, 90% bull run, roughly, around this point, before the next correction towards the 200 moving average. Price then bounced off the 200 moving average in 2016, and we're looking at a 63% bull run to this high point here before the next correction to the 200 moving average on the weekly time frame. And then off the weekly time frame, if we ignore coronavirus, we had a 105% bull run once price bounced off the 200 moving average. Now, because there was such a big run in the markets through all of last year, we have 
naturally seen a correction. There has to be a correction. We can't simply expect the market to shoot off in one direction and print high after high after high. These pullbacks and these corrections in the market are natural to the way the market moves. And if you ignore the noise around uh, that you will see in the news, the social uh, on our social media channels, all the opinions and thought process that people are pumping out there, most of which is wrong, ill-informed, inaccurate, all we are seeing in 2022 is a correction back to the 200 simple moving average. And that's because we had such a huge run in the market from 2020 through to 2021. There was bound to be a correction. When that correction comes in, is anyone's guess. But there are particular times of the year we can expect a correction. November, historically, if you look at the, the historical movement of stocks and um, the S&P 500, November is um, synonymous, uh, sorry, September is synonymous with corrections in the market. And so is the start of the year, January, February, they are synonymous with correction in the market. How deep that correction will be is really down to the force of the market. This year, we've seen a pretty deep correction. But where has it come to? The 200 moving average. And we are now, we have so far seen a bounce of around 11%, 12%. What does that tell us? What that tells us is that this could be the start of the next bull run. If you look at the previous bull runs, 60%, 90%, 110%. So if this bull run holds, then we're likely to see another big run in the market. And that will be confirmed when price breaks and closes above the current high from January of this year, and particularly that $5,000 round number. Now, that's that doesn't mean to say I'm going to wait for that to happen. I'm not going to be waiting for the market to move to this high and then move above the 5,000 round number before I start buying stocks. I'm going to start testing the waters with stocks when price moves above the 50 simple moving average and our trend filter turns green. You'll have noticed we have a trend filter, which is green in a bull market, red in a bear market or a correction, and then gray in a sort of neutral market. So you can see in this bull run when it's when the trend filter started turning green in July of last uh, July of 2020 after the coronavirus. This is when we started buying into stocks, and you can see that it then went on this run. Why at this point here? Because it was above the 50 simple moving average, above the 200 simple moving average, and the trend filter is green. So we're waiting for that same setup here. It's currently bouncing off the 200 moving average. We've had the bounce but it's still below the 50 simple moving average, which is this orange line. When price moves above the 50 simple moving average and our trend filter turns green, that's when we will start buying stock. So there is an element of patience. Now, this is where a lot of people go wrong. Applying patience is very difficult. It's a skill that is underappreciated or under or mis, misunderstood because people want money today. There's two reasons for that. First of all, people go down the route of day trading, and quick riches, thinking that it's an easy way to make money. Day trading is a proven wealth extraction mechanism. It's not a wealth creation mechanism. It's a wealth extraction mechanism. It's proven to take money away from busy, hardworking, everyday people like us and give it to the institutions, give it to the brokers, give it to other people other than us as everyday people. So we want to look away from that approach. Day trading does not work. Now, the other reason why people want to make money today is because of the way we are conditioned. We are conditioned to make money as a salary. We get paid per hour. We get paid per week, per month, per year. Because we get paid as a, uh, because we get paid, um, as a salary, people then try and take this mentality to the financial markets. And they think, right, instead of me having to go to work and make £2,000 or $2,000 or whatever the currency is in your country, all I need to do is sit in front of the computer and day trade away until I make that in day trading. And obviously, and that is how people end up losing significant sums of money. Day trading is very difficult. It's suited for institutions because they have billions to play with. For us, we have to have a different approach. We want a long-term approach. And that involves applying patience and waiting for the right market conditions to present themselves. You will have heard the expression, guys, standing aside is also a position. Right, Applying patience and standing aside is also a position. It's also a trade. So we've got to apply that logic to the way we analyze the market and the way we wait for the right setups. Okay, 
So now if we go down to the daily time frame, so just to, clar just to recap on the weekly, it's bouncing off the 200 moving average. The trend filter has turned from red to gray. We want it to turn green. For it to turn green, we want it to see price move above the 50 simple moving average. Once we have that set up, green trend filter and price above the 50 and 200 simple moving average averages, we can start buying stocks. Now, this is where the daily time frame comes in. The daily time frame is extremely significant. Why? Well, if I just compress the market, we can see that because of this correction that we've been faced with this year, once price broke through the 200 simple moving average, which was in January the first time, and then February, and then again in April, specifically in April, once price broke below in April, it's been using the 200 simple moving average as resistance. Here in April, we saw this decline. Then we had a correction back to the 200 simple moving average, had another decline. And look where we are right now. We're back at the 200 simple moving average. So what do we have? We have a mixture of bullish and bearish factors. The monthly time frame is more neutral as it's in between the high and the low of last year. So it's more of a neutral bias. On the weekly time frame, we are bullish because we're above the 200 moving average, but we're not as bullish as we want to be because we want to see price above the 50 simple moving average and the trend filter to turn green. The daily time frame <coughs> has a mixture of bullish and bearish factors. First of all, it's below the 200 moving average, so it has a bearish bias. It's above the 20 and the 50 simple moving averages, so that confirms a bullish an element of bullishness to it, certainly the start of a bullish trend. And the trend filter is alternating between green and grey, predominantly green. So we do have this bullishness coming in. But until it actually moves above the 200 simple moving average, we want to be standing aside because we know the 200 simple moving average has the potential to force the market down. We saw it here in April. We saw it again in August. We could potentially see it again through the rest of this year. And this is why you want to apply patience, because if you start buying into stocks and the S&P 500 is declining, then the stock market could go in the direction of the S&P 500. And if the market starts going down, so will all the stocks that you're in. And this is why patience is so important. Once we see the S&P 500 above the 200 moving average on the daily, and as already mentioned, once we see price move above the weekly 50 simple moving average, the uh, trend filter turn green, then we have alignment between the weekly and the daily. And that is enough for me to start buying into the market. Once the momentum starts kicking in and price moves above the high of last year on the monthly time frame, that's a whole different ballgame. That's when we can really start getting aggressive with buying stocks. In between these levels, as long as there's bullishness between the weekly and the daily time frame, that is enough to start being to start testing the waters, start buying stocks at reduced risk allowing those positions to play out, being a little bit more patient and picking off on only very good setups. And once that happens and the market really starts kicking off, and what I mean by that, the, the S&P 500 moves above the high of last year, that's when I'll go to town with being extremely aggressive and how I then end up getting those returns, which some of you may have seen, 86% over 18 months. Um, go back to uh, previous years, we achieved... Uh, triple triple digit returns in 12 to 18 months and that's simply through holding positions and compounding and risking typically no more than one to two percent per position okay so you can see guys how important the S&P 500 is to our analysis it's extremely important it gives us the foundation and tells us whether we should be buying or selling or standing aside Okay, let's quickly move on to the FTSE. Now, I don't really spend too much time on the FTSE, but I do look at it because I am in the UK and I do look at UK stocks. But in terms of stocks, the US market gives me everything that I need to know. But because there's a rally happening in the S&P 500, we're seeing the FTSE follow. Remember, there's an expression, which is when America sneezes, uh, the rest of the world catches a cold. So it, it's whatever happens in the US, the rest of the world tends to follow. So because the the S&P 500 is rallying, we're seeing a rally in the UK market. So October, November, we have since, since the low of last month. Since the low of last month, we've seen a rally of 12 and a half, 13 percent 
in the market. Just give me one second, guys. Okay, we've seen a rally of 12.5% to 13%. Ideally, what we want to be seeing on the FTSE is price breaking through these resistance levels, these black lines. So we've got these black lines across the charts. These are our resistance levels. Again, this is a tool that we've developed. It automatically detects these levels and highlights them for us. It's based on a, a logic and an algorithm. So what we don't need to be doing is wasting time drawing support and resistance on a chart. It's what a lot of people end up doing and spending ridiculous amounts of time doing that. If you're looking at hundreds of charts and you're manually drawing support and resistance, it's just a very difficult, very difficult way of, of analyzing charts and trying to incorporate this into your lifestyle. If you've got tools that can do all the manual labor for you, and then all you need to do is choose the stocks and manage the stocks, it's a, it's a much simpler process. So we've had a good run to the upside. Look at where price is now, guys. If you look at this month, it's actually trading above the green line, which is the highest point of last year. So we are starting to see this bullishness coming in. Ideally, though, we want to see price move above these, these resistance levels, these black lines, and then start printing new highs. So above that 8,000 round number is really what we want to see the stock market do. On the weekly, look at the weekly, guys. Above the 200 moving average, above the 50 simple moving average, and the trend filter is green. That's what we want to see on the S&P 500. If I move up to the S&P 500, this is what we want to see. We want to see price move above the 50 simple moving average and the trend filter to turn green. We've already got that on the FTSE, but because it's in a in this sort of long-term consolidation, we can tend to ignore it a bit because when it does do that, it reverses. We saw it here, it reversed. We saw it here, it reversed. If it can start moving further up, then we're in a you know we're in the right market to start buying stocks. And on the daily, look at that move to the upside above the 200, above the 50, above the 20. We are starting to see that bullishness really start creeping in. Okay, so we are starting to see strength, but we're not in optimal market condition. So we want to be applying a little bit of patience until the S&P 500 sets up correctly. Okay, now, while the S&P 500 is setting up correctly, we want to continue to do our analysis and to continue to create a watch list of stocks that we can then invest in once the market sets up. We don't want to get complacent and not do analysis. We still conduct our analysis every single day, making sure that we're building our watch list of stocks, um, updating those watch list stocks, removing stocks that don't need to be on there, adding new stocks. We have this sort of tier A, tier B system, and we're consistently adding stocks from tier A to tier B or downgrading from tier A to T, sorry. We're consistently upgrading from tier B to tier A or downgrading from tier A to tier B, as well as adding new stocks to that process. And it's essential because that is the foundation of investing in stocks. What you don't want to be doing is jumping online, seeing which stock everyone is talking about, asking someone you don't know for an opinion, and then buying that stock. That is what most people end up doing and how they have a real mess of a portfolio. In, in the UK, we have an expression, which is it looks like a dog's dinner, which means it's just it's all over the place, right? You don't want a, a dog's dinner for a portfolio. What you want is a, a simple, repeatable process that's continuously picking out the best stocks, and then you can just invest in those stocks. We, we have a saying here at Sublime Trading, which is you want to find the right stocks, invest at the right time using the right strategy. Right? So I'm going to say that again. You want to invest in the right stocks. Sorry, you want to find the right stocks or you want to shortlist the right stocks, invest at the right time using the right strategy. That is ultimately what, in its basic form, that is ultimately what investing and portfolio management is. I'll say that one more time. You want to shortlist the best stocks, invest at the right time using the right strategy. If you can nail that, the growth will be consistent. And, what, and let's be clear on this term consistent. Consistent is not every day or every week, guys. Consistent is year on year on year. You have to look at your portfolio on an annual basis because you may not make any money for six months because markets are just flat or not going anywhere. And then you could see a 50% return in the following six months. So that means you've made 50% over 12 months. You do not want to be looking at stocks on a, or your performance on a day-to-day -day or a week-to-week -week basis. Look at it at the end of the year. Think of your performance year on year on year. That's how we want to define consistency. 
Okay, so let's look at one of the first stocks on my portfolio. In fact, this is actually still in my portfolio. This is uh, ABC, Amerisource, Bergen. First of all, let's look at the monthly time frame. One of the first things that I like to look for is a history of performance. If a stock has performed well in the past, then it's very likely to perform well in the future. Amerisource Bergen, a very good example of a stock that's performed very well in the past. If you look at this low point, which was around $13 in 2008, it then went to $120 in 2015. Very good looking stock. Then it went through a sideways market. This is really important. We want to see a base or a consolidation because a consolidation acts as a base for the next leg in the journey. The market broke out. Let's take it from this green bar, which is in December 2021. That's when we started buying into this stock. And you can see that actually it's moved, gone on to perform very well. We got in at around $125. And it's now at $170. We've had to sit through this correction. Uh, we managed our exit a little bit aggressively because there wasn't much risk on this. Typically 1%, 2%. And we are now seeing good return on our initial risk. If this breaks out and continues, we will start compounding and adding new positions because that's ultimately how growth is achieved. If you go to the weekly price above the 200 moving average, let's open that up above the 200 moving average, above the 50 simple moving average, the trend filter is green. If it breaks out, we're likely to see price move towards where? Well, $200 is the next target level. If it breaks through $200, $300, $400 and so on. Round numbers are very good levels that price will move towards. Okay, and then if you look on the daily time frame, guys, the trend filter is green. It's above the 20, it's above the 50, it's above the 200 moving average. Also, what we're starting to see is alignment. What I mean by that is that the 20 simple moving average is now above the 50, which is above the 200. If I just expand the chart, you can see that the 50 simple moving average is just starting to creep up above the 200 simple moving average. What this means is that the moving averages are confirming what price is telling us. Where people go wrong with moving averages is that they use them as um, leading indicators. They try to predict what the market is going to do next based on moving averages, but moving averages are lagging indicators. I use the close, I use the 200 simple moving average and it's based on the closing price. So we have to wait for price to close and then it will calculate the moving averages. So it makes no sense to try and use the moving averages to try and predict what the market is going to do next because these are lagging indicators. The best indicator for that is price itself. Once price itself can dictate uh, a direction, the moving averages will confirm that. So how do we do that? Well, if I just get this level here, um, if I just mark this level here, this here is the high point from 2022, April 2022. The market found resistance, went through this correction, and it's now back at this high point here. If the market breaks through this high point, pulls back to retest it and then breaks out. So what I mean by that is what we're looking for is this sort of setup. Let me just grab a pen here. What we're looking for is the market to move up, move down to retest, and then we want it to go up again. This is when we can start buying into the stock market. This point right here, when it starts moving up. If we, the market does this, does this, and then let me just change the color and then starts doing this, then we've done the right thing by standing aside because the market is back in consolidation. And this is what can happen if the S&P starts weakening, the market will be dragged into consolidation and we wanna avoid this scenario. What we want is this scenario here. This scenario, this blue scenario, which I highlighted, that is the scenario that we want. Okay, so I'm just going to remove these. Give me one second. Uh, remove nine drawings. Yeah, remove nine drawings. Wait. So I'm going to do that once again. Just drew that line there. Right. What we're looking for is this scenario. We want the market to rally. When it rallies, it's broken out of consolidation. We want it to pull back and retest this black line as support. And then we want it to move up. Once it starts rallying up, this is when we want to start buying in. Unless we get this set up. We want to be standing aside. Okay. I hope that's clear, guys. If you've got any questions on that, uh, put them in the chat box and let me know and I will get back to you. Uh, let me just see. I'm not missing anything here. Thank you. Uh, 
Let's see. Thanks for trading me. Thank you, Trading View. Um, okay. Right. So this is one of the stocks on our list. Amerisource Bergen. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. A Bergen or Bergen. Amerisource Bergen, I think it is. So this is a stock on our list. Okay, next. AJG, Arthur J. Gallagher. This is a stock that's been in our portfolio numerous times over the years. And you can see why. Look how well it's performed. Since it broke out of this sort of sideways consolidation market in 2016, around $50, this stock is now worth $200. This stock has been on a, a humongous run. Uh, let me uh, get rid of that. Uh, make sure I've got my mouse. Yeah, okay. All right. And if you look at what it's doing now, it's at $200, just short of $200. It's above the high of last year. It's printing new highs. It's got a good history of performance. This is a stock that I'm watching very keenly. On the weekly, it's above the 200. It's above the 50. The trend filter is green. And if you go to the daily, it's above all three moving averages. The trend filter is green. Now, look at what's happening, guys. This is what I was looking for on AJ on the previous stock, which is ABC. What we said on ABC was that we wanted the market to move out, we wanted to pull back, and then we wanted to bounce. This is what we're seeing at the moment on this particular stock. Uh, let me just correct this. Okay, this is what we're seeing on this particular stock. If I just grab that pen again, we've had a move to the upside. It's now starting to come down. Ideally, we want it to come to this level, and then, we want it to bounce and we want it to move. So ideally what we're looking for is a bullish flag formation of sorts. Yeah, a bullish flag formation, guys, if you're not aware of what a bullish flag formation is, a bullish flag formation is a short move against the trend before a continuation, right? So these moves here, this followed by the breakout is a bullish flag. This followed by a breakout is a bullish flag. So trends, good looking trends are made up of bullish flags. So you can see here, there's a flag formation. Uh, here was a flag formation, but it failed and the market reversed. So the last bullish flag is, ten, is usually where the market fails. But a market can trend for 12 to 24 months before we get that top. OK, so what we want to be seeing here is a confirmed bullish flag formation. All right, I hope I'm not losing people, but this is a good stock, AJG. It's a stock on our watch list. All right, next, CI, Sydney Corporation. Let's look at the monthly time frame. Monthly time frame, it's performed. It's got a history of performance. Not the smoothest. It can be a little bit erratic, a little bit choppy. We want to have much smoother looking stocks. If you go to AJG, a really good looking stock, right? This history is a little bit more erratic, but that's not to say that it won't change. And this is what... Let me choose my mouse again. That's not to say it won't change. I mean, when it trends, if you look at this period of trend, this is a 216% run from $50 to $170. So when it trends, it can trend very well. So we want to be aware of that. So this, look at what it's doing now. It's creating new highs. It's above the high of last year. This is a good looking stock. It has the potential to go very far. On the weekly, above the 200, above the 50, the trend filter is green. On the daily, above the 50, excuse me, above the 200, above the 50, above the 20, but the trend filter is grey. If we go back to the S&P 500, if that starts moving up, this stock will move with it. When the trend filter turns green, it's a potential. Okay, next stock, uh, Genuine Parts Company. On the monthly time frame, we know that it has a good history of performance here. This is when it went from around $24 in 2009 to $108 in 2014. So we know it can cover ground very quickly. Well, it can cover ground nicely, I should say. Not very quickly, but it can cover ground over a sustained period of time, which is what we want. Look at what's happening now. Above the high of last year, printing new highs. Last month was a strong month and that momentum has continued. So this is looking good. This is a stock that's looking very interesting. On the weekly, price above the 200 moving average, the trend filter is green. And on the daily, price above all three moving averages, the trend filter is green. What do we have here, guys? We have a stock that you probably have never heard of that has the potential to go on and trend and hand out excellent profit. This is why you want to have a scanning process and an analysis process that gives you stocks 
that is fo that focuses on the performance of the stock and not the name of the stock. A lot of people get caught up in Tesla, for example, or gold, or the euro dollar, Bitcoin, as you know. Uh, all, all of these assets should be on your global watch list, but that doesn't mean that they should be anywhere near your portfolio because every stock, every asset has its time. And when it's their time to perform, that is the asset that you want in your portfolio. When that asset is not performing, it should go back on your global watch list and you just keep an eye out on it until your scanners and your analysis picks it up again and then it gets re-added into your portfolio. And a stock or an asset may not be in your portfolio for many, many, many months until it reappears. But that's the, that's the life of an investor. That's the nature of good investing. Invest in the asset, not in your opinion. If you invest in your opinion and other people's opinion, you will always lose money. If you invest in the asset and the, and the performance of the asset, that is how you will make money. Okay, I hope that, you know, I hope that makes sense. That goes back to what I was saying, which is you want to shortlist the best stocks, invest at the right time, using the right strategy. And I should change that. It doesn't necessarily have to be the right stock. You want to shortlist the best assets, invest at the right time using the right strategy. And if you get that correct, you'll make consistent returns. And I should say you want to do that over the long term. You don't want to apply that to day trading or scalping or swing trading. Those techniques are flawed. They're, made, they're sold as the sexy way to quick riches, but they are flawed and you won't make money. And people often learn the hard way before the penny drops. Some people don't ever learn. They, they, their ego takes hold and they are determined to crack the day trading thing. They think that they can do uh, and succeed where millions of people before them have failed. And they think for some reason that they're special and they have a special skill or technique or a strategy that will perform and will return what they want where others have failed. You know, at some point you have to learn, guys, that there is a better approach. Remember, with everything, there's wrong practices, there's best practices, and then there's everything in between. What we have to focus on is what is the best, what are the best practices for us as busy everyday people that can return us consistent returns while we continue to work, while we continue to spend time with our family, go to the gym, do our hobbies, have our social life, look after our pets. We want to be able to get on with life and have our money growing for us in the background. And the only way you can do that is through trend following and long-term investing. Nothing else will give you that, that sense of achievement, that sense of satisfaction, and that complete lifestyle where you are getting on with life, creating a happy life, but you have your money working for you in the background. And also, that's the other thing. Point, and that's the other point I want to really drive home, guys. You can't create money without having money, right? Money can't grow from nothing. You've got to have a good starting pot which you've saved through a job or a career, some kind of hustle. You've got to create a pot and then you've got to invest that pot. Okay. If you are starting with 50 pounds or hundred pounds, some small amount, and you're looking to leverage that to hundreds of thousands into the millions, <coughs> it's not going to work. Every so often someone manages to slip through the net through pure luck. And then they sort of advertise themselves as this guru who's made you know, shed loads of money and then people try and achieve that same strategy and it's often very, very disappointing. He got lucky or she got lucky. There has to be a much more robust approach, a proven approach that you can use again and again and again. Okay, so you think over the long term, never abandon the, the principles of sound investing, which is to play over the long term. And when you embrace, and final point on this, guys, when you embrace compounding, the compound growth is really where the money is made. That exponential curve is where the money is made. So focus on the long term and embrace compound growth and you won't be disappointed. Okay, a couple more stocks. MRK, I think this is the last US stock. Again, look at MRK. I'm just going to compress it. Okay, MRK had this very, very good performance going back from 1994 up until this high point here, which is 2000. A really good example of a stock that performed very well many, many years ago. Since that point, if I just compress it, since that point here, 2000, the market's just been going sideways. But this is fantastic. What it's created is this huge base. There's an expression, guys, which is the longer the consolidation, the bigger the breakout. 
So the fact that this is now breaking out, it's out of this consolidation. It's above the $100 round number. This could go on to move to $200, $300, $400, dollars simply because it's gone through a very long period of consolidation. The longer the consolidation, the bigger the breakout. So this is a must. This is a must stock to have on your watch list. Look at the weekly, above the 200, above the 50, the trend filter is green. Look at the daily, above all three moving averages, the trend filter is green. Look how fanned out the moving averages are. The 20 is above the 50, which is above the 200. All three are angling up, confirming that we are in some kind of bullish trend. The market is moving to the upside, okay? A good looking stock. Now, let me just show you one last thing. Let me see if I can get this up. Uh, on the daily time frame, excuse me. I wanted to find the highest point. I don't know if, if I can. I don't know if we can do it on here because I'm just trying to find the highest point. I think this is the highest point here. Let's have a look. I think that's the highest point. Yeah, it must be the highest point. Okay, look at look at price. Whenever it came to around that highest point, it struggled, it struggled, it struggled. This is often the case. Price will often battle. The bulls and the bears will often have battles around these all-time highs. But once the market eventually kicks off, which is where the patience comes in, it actually starts moving very, very quickly. And then the 20 simple moving average regularly acts as a support. So price comes to the 20 simple moving average, bounces, comes back to the 20, bounces. Sometimes it comes to the 50 and then bounces. But just because it's starting to correct or pull back doesn't mean the end of the trend. This is where patience comes in. Okay, it's just a pullback. Okay, so that is the last of my US stocks. I'm just going to have one look at a UK stock that is on my list. Same sort of setup. It doesn't matter whether it's a UK stock or US stock. I do the exact same analysis. I look at the history. It's performed very well from 2010 to 2013, so three years. Then it went through this extremely long consolidation. The longer the consolidation, the bigger the breakout. Notice this sort of bumpy ride around this period here. As I said, that already happened. That happens when a stock comes to previous all-time highs. There's always this battle between the bulls and the bears before the market continues in the bullish direction. This month has been a strong month for the bulls. On the weekly, price above the 200 moving average, the trend filter is green. And on the daily, price above all three moving averages, the trend filter is green. So that's the analysis for today, guys. I'm just going to remind you what I'm looking for on the S&P 500. I'm waiting for the market to move above the 50 simple moving average and for the trend filter to be green. And the same on the daily. I'm waiting for price to move above the 200 moving average. But the, well, the trend filter is already green. So once it's above the 200 moving average, the trend filter is green. And we've got a green trend filter on the weekly. We have that alignment and when we can start buying into stocks. Okay. I don't think there are any questions. I can't seem to see any questions at the moment. Let me just have a look here. Okay, thank you. Got some new followers. Uh, someone's boosted my script. Okay, that's brilliant. Uh, no questions at the moment. No one's come through with any questions. So I'm going to end the live stream here. Uh, okay, some messages coming through. Register. Idusa, okay, I hope I've said your name there correctly. Hansa, thank you. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, lovely. Glad to have you on here. Guys, there's some messages coming through. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Did not, uh, not, look, this is my, only my second stream, so I'm still having a look at the tech. I'm still getting familiar with the tech. Uh, look, brilliant. Hansa's just put uh, a, a question through, which is, do you mind looking at TSM? Absolutely don't mind looking at TSM. If you guys want me to look at any stocks, any assets. It doesn't necessarily have to be in stocks. It could also be in commodities, currencies. The logic is exactly the same. So TSM, I'm assuming is this Taiwan uh, Semiconductor Manufacturing. If that is, please just give me a thumbs up. Look, first and foremost, based on my analysis and based on what I've said so far, this is not a stock that you want to be buying. Why? First of all, it's below the lowest point of last year, which is this red line. And it's only dropping. 
um, you know, get up, guys, get away from this Warren Buffett uh, mentality of buying undervalued stocks. Warren Buffett has very deep pockets. If you go down the route of Warren Buffett, you're going to end up buying stocks that only just drop against you. It's the expression to catch a falling knife. And when you're in that scenario, you end up with stocks that are in negative and end up losing you money for very, very long periods of time. And you've just got to hold and wait because you don't know whether you should sell, whether you should, you know, what you should do. Should I sell? Should I hold? You know, I'm hundreds or thousands of pounds down on this stock. Warren Buffett is good for what Warren Buffett does. You are not Warren Buffett. And what I mean by that is you do not have the capital. He has billions. Even if you've got hundreds of thousands of pounds or millions of pounds, you still do not want to be investing like Warren Buffett. Put it this way, guys. Warren Buffett, if you look at performance tables, Warren Buffett is only mid-table, 20% a year, which is fine. It beats the banking system. But if you look at the top end of performance tables, it's all trend followers. Richard Dennis. The turtle traders you may have heard of, uh, Paul Tudor Jones, John W. Henry. These guys made money trend following. And if you look at their performance, it's usually at the top end, 80% a year, 90% a year, 100% a year. Those are the people that you want to be looking at and following because they do exactly what we do here. We have trend followers. Wait for the market to confirm a direction and then find the best stocks in those market directions. This way, uh, this way. So, for example, sorry, I forgot your name, Hansa. This way, you do not end up in this scenario of buying a stock that is dropping and hoping it's going to reverse only for it to drop and drop and drop and drop. A really good example of that is PayPal, guys. PayPal is a perfect example. Imagine buying in at $280 thinking it's going to reverse and then it just keeps on dropping, keeps on dropping, keeps on dropping. And now you're stuck with a stock where your money is tied up and you've just lost a whole load of money. Do not do that. Be better than that. So let's just go back to um, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. It's a dropping stock. If you look at it on the weekly, it's below the 200 moving average. The trend filter is red. It's come to the 200 moving average as resistance. This could force the market down. And on the daily time frame, you can see it's only been dropping. So what you're doing is you're buying into stocks that are going down. Don't buy into stocks that are going down. Go in, buy into stocks that are going up. So if we go back to, let me give you a stock that's in my portfolio, McKesson Corporation. McKesson Corporation has been in my portfolio since December of last year. When it broke above the high of last year, it broke above out of this consolidation. A really good example, guys, of the longer the consolidation, the bigger the breakout. So while the S&P has dropped 25%, while TSM has dropped 40, 50%. This stock has rallied by 60%. And all I did was just apply a patience, wait for the right setup, enter and hold. Look at the weekly. Above the 200, above the 50, nice trend. And on the daily, <clears throat> a really nice looking trend. Now we're just applying a bit of patience. Once it breaks and closes above $400, we can expect it to start moving up. <laughs> okay, so I hope that answers your question on TSM. Let's have a look at Oxy. This should hopefully be able to answer your own questions now. If you look at the analysis, if you look at the analysis that I've said to you, which is look for stocks that are printing new highs, that are outperforming the S&P 500, yeah, this stock's doing okay. It's recovered. But it depends on when you bought it. Let's say you bought it back in 2019 or even further back. You know, you, this stock has only been going down. And imagine how long people have had to wait for it to recover. And still, there's no guarantee that this is going to recover. I mean, when I say recovery, it's when it gets back to its all-time high and then starts creating new highs. There's no guarantee of that because there's so much work. Look at all these black lines, these resistance levels. The market could just force its way back down again. Uh, you, I bought at 50s, uh, then out at 74. So you bought in at 50. Okay, that's fine. You bought here, you bought here. But if you compare it to uh, TSM, Taiwan, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, you've got two stocks that are, one is dropping and the other one is going up. So you've got two stocks that are just cancelling each other out. And that's not what you want to be doing. What you want is numerous stocks all moving in the same direction, all growing your account, all compounding so that you have nice, simple growth 
on your account. Oh, you got out at 74. Okay, but that's too short term. That's not going to do anything for you. If you think about your future, if you think about your growth, if you think about what you want to achieve, getting in at 50 and then buying in at 50 and then selling at 74, you made a bit of money. You could probably go out and do a bit of shopping, buy a T-shirt, whatever, but it's not wealth. We want to think of terms of wealth. We want to think in terms of, right, if I have £20,000 saved now and I want to make it into a million over 20 years, what do I need to do? That is how you guys should be thinking. Not, right, I'm going to get in at 50 and get out as soon as it hits 74 because I'm afraid I'm going to lose money. Often when you get in and get out like this, it's based on fear. There's emotion involved. Okay? So, okay, that's great. That's great. If you're making money and you're reinvesting it, fantastic. But still think in terms of long-term growth. Think in terms of holding and compounding. Right? And that will completely revolutionize the way you make money. Completely revolutionize the way you money. This sort of short-term growth, growth or recycling, one month you make 5%, next month you make 5%, next month you make 5%. But then the next month you could lose 30%. So you're back to where you are. That's the difficulty of short-term trading. There's no consistency, okay? So um, going back, so Oxy, again, just looking at the monthly time frame, this isn't a stock that I personally would recommend. It's too much work. We want it to move above the high of last year. And this is the thing, guys. Why would you want to be in Oxy when you could be in McKesson? Explain that to me. Why would you want to be in Oxy when you could be in McKesson? Makes no sense, right? Because McKesson is simple. You're doing nothing. You're doing absolutely nothing. You bought the stock and it's just growing. It's growing. It's growing. All you need to do is look at the stock every day, manage it, go, okay, it's fine. Everything's looking good. Let it go. Okay? Good investing should be simple. We work hard day to day. We go to work. We get a job. We get a salary. We spend eight, nine hours of our day, five days a week, earning money. We have to work hard. There's no getting away from it. These sort of get rich quick, um, this sort of, sorry, excuse me, thinking of um, self-help books and all of these kind of things that tell you that, oh, you just have to be positive. No, you have to take that positive mentality and you have to apply it and you have to work hard. Once you get to a point where you've got a good salary coming through and you've got good money coming through, then you can be smart. And the way you be smart is by leveraging your money through the financial markets. Get your money working hard for you. I hope that makes sense. Work hard to make a salary, but then work hard. Uh, let me say that again. Work hard to make a salary, but then work smart by making your money work for you. Reverse that logic. Don't day trade. Okay. Uh, I can absolutely, I can absolutely look at US oil. I've just got a couple of other stocks. FedEx. Yeah, absolutely. FedEx is one that's been in my portfolio. Let's see what FedEx is doing. Right, guys, do I even need to go beyond the monthly time frame? Again, look at McKesson Corporation. Look at what I've said. Look at all the stocks that I've just gone through, the ones that are starting to print new highs. If you had a choice between GPC, which is um, Genuine Parks Company, and FedEx, Hansa, let me ask you right now, if you had a choice between GPC and FedEx, which one would you go for? Which one needs to do less work to make you more profit? Right? If you understand what I'm saying here, you will choose GPC over FedEx. Now, FedEx is a well-known brand. We know that. And it's a giant of a company. And maybe it's doing well in terms of its profits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that doesn't necess that doesn't translate into a good stock. We have to go back to PayPal. PayPal is a, it's a giant of a company, right? We know that PayPal is a giant of a company. We know it. But its stock doesn't reflect that. So we don't care about whether it's a giant of a company. We care about whether the stock is going to return me profit. Okay? So based on that, GPC versus, and uh, there's a new little... Um, function here that I've recently come across. Uh, thank you for this trading view. We can put uh, charts on top of each other, right? So looking at FedEx, we can see that while FedEx is dropping, yeah, when FedEx is dropping, uh, MCK is on the rise or GPC is on the rise while FedEx is dropping, okay? 
All right, let me just get rid of this. Let me get rid of FedEx. All right. Um, can you check US oil? Yes, I can do that. When would you buy a dip then? Uh, can you be a little bit more specific on that? Can you define a dip? Okay, because there's so many terms to a dip. I'll look at US oil in the meantime, and then let me know what you mean by a dip. Okay, so looking at US oil, it's a difficult one because US oil, the last time I actually invested in US oil for a sustained period of time was during the, what was the bear market from 2014 to 2016. I shorted oil. Since then, I've not really been in oil simply because it's just been all over the place. Now, we've had a little rise to the upside and I had a small position around this area here and I got out of that at, a, I think it was break even or a very tiny loss. I tested the waters, it's set up. But to be honest with you, oil doesn't interest me. And the reason why oil doesn't interest me is simply because it's going nowhere. It's whipsawing all over the place. It suggests a trend, then it reverses. It's notoriously difficult. So again, don't get caught up in the fact that it's oil. What you have to do is look at the chart, independent of its brand name and its ticker symbol, and make a more informed decision. So oil for me is not one that I'll be looking to buy at any point, certainly not even short, because if you look at it on the weekly, it's still above the 200 moving average. And if you look at it on the daily, it's below the 200 moving average. So we don't have alignment. Alignment is when all three time frames are bullish or all three time frames are bearish. Here we have some bullishness, some bearishness. So for me, this kind of environment is to stand aside. And I don't need to get caught up in oil because there's so many other assets, particularly in stocks, that are looking very, very interesting. So I hope that answers your question, Harlow. Uh, Harlow Vicante. Vicante, I hope I'm saying your name correctly there. Uh, I thought a dip was when price is dropping without a recent pullback and seems to be to reach a bottom like 2009. Okay, but how do you know it's a dip? How do you know it's bottomed out and it's going to continue and it's going to reverse? So this is the thing. I don't buy dips unless the market is in trend. So when the market is trending and then it starts pulling back to the 20 or the 50 simple moving average, that for me is when I buy a dip. To just buy a dip because the market is dropping is how people end up with that catching a falling knife scenario. They think it's a dip. It's found a bottom. It keeps on dropping. It's very, very difficult to pick tops and bottoms. It's impossible. Warren Buffett himself says he never does that. So we don't want to pick tops and bottoms. We want to go in the direction of the trend. And the only way you can be successful at picking tops and bottoms, again, is you've got pockets deep enough like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett can pick a bottom and then it keeps on dropping. But it's okay for him because he can hold that position in negative for a very long period of time. So try not to pick tops and bottoms and focus on the trend. You're welcome, Hansa. Reach out to me if you have any other questions, okay? Just direct message me and I'll get back to you. All right, that was actually quite good. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I felt like I was talking to a blank screen for, for a minute until all of these questions started coming through. So, all right, guys, look, I think we will end this here. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. All right, guys. I think that's... That's everything. Have a lovely rest of the day. And I will probably do, I don't know how regularly I'm going to do this, maybe do another one tomorrow. There may be daily, maybe twice a week. Uh, but certainly if we start getting interesting movements on the S&P 500, we will definitely be doing more of these live streams. All right. Take care of yourself, guys. And I will see you very soon.